It's no secret that Sony has been charging a premium for its TVs, but in today's market, can Sony still justify that position? More importantly, should you spend extra money to get a Sony TV? Let's figure that out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and on May 2nd, Sony finally announced pricing and availability dates for its 2022 TV lineup. And for those of us who follow along with what's happening in the TV space, the fact that Sony's TVs, some of them anyway, are coming in a bit more expensive than most of its competition comes as no real surprise. In fact, it's so expected at this point that you're likely to see terms like the Sony tax in online discussion about TVs. Sony made the decision to go premium several years ago, but this year the premium Sony is charging looks a little more tame than it has in the past, and there's a story behind all of that. So today I want to talk about how Sony TVs have evolved over the past several years, where Sony sits in the market in terms of performance and whether Sony can still pull off this premium pricing thing, and ultimately help you decide if you should shell out a few more bucks for a Sony TV. And hey, if you like this kind of discussion, let me know by tapping those buttons and hit me up in the comments. Also, as a friendly reminder, beware of scam giveaways down there in the comments. If I'm running a giveaway, you'll see this face right here telling you all about it. We're not gonna ask you to hit us up on Telegram. Speaking of giveaways, I am running a big one when we hit a million subscribers. So help us get there, all right? Thank you. So let's time travel back seven years to 2015 when 4K Blu-ray players weren't even a thing yet. LG had just made its first flat 4K OLED. Samsung was still playing around with curved TVs and Sony was making this TV with massive speakers on the side. Now at the time, Sony's electronics business was faltering and they may not have known it yet, but Japan's economy was in the midst of plunging into another recession. Tough business decisions had to be made. Sony closed all of its Sony only retail stores. Remember those? It sold off its Vio computer division and laid off about 400 workers at its US HQ in San Diego. And in the midst of all this, then President Mike Fasulo announced during a press lunch that Sony was going to lean hard into premium. Now, at the time, I didn't really track what that meant, but it sounded like kind of a bold move for a company that was having some trouble. Cut to one year later in 2016, and Panasonic, also a Japan-based TV brand, announced it was full-on pulling out of the US TV market entirely. Meanwhile, Sony was out here announcing the Z9D, which at the time was the most outrageously premium consumer TV on the market. People are still talking about it, as a matter of fact, and that kind of shed some light on how guts see Sony's move to premium really was. Instead of making money on selling lots and lots of mid to low grade TVs, Sony was gonna target the premium market and sell fewer, much more expensive TVs. Well, the move seems to have worked. Sony's in a pretty good place right now. Not only did its TV division recover well, but its camera division also rebounded. And if we look back over the last six years, Sony has gathered a lot of accolades for its TVs. Reviewers have been praising Sony's TV processing consistently over this time. Backlight Master Drive, has earned Sony a lot of props, and when Sony finally entered the OLED TV market, it did so in a very big way. In fact, by pairing LG Display's OLED panels with Sony processing, manufacturing, and quality assurance, Sony managed to snag the Value Electronics TV Shootouts King of TV Award in 2018, 2019, and 2021. So it's pretty well established that Sony has been making a killer TV product and it's managed to hold itself above its competition over the past few years pretty well. And when your product distinguishes itself in that way, people are usually willing to pay a premium. But that's all history. Where are we now? We've got Sony out here with the A95K QD OLED taking on the much less expensive Samsung S95B OLED, using the same panel technology, by the way. And we're seeing the Sony Z9K 8K mini LED TV taking on the Samsung QN900B 8K mini LED TV, costing quite a bit more. And then, well, hold on just a second. Sony A80K OLED taking on the LG C2 OLED and priced about the same. Well, that's different than what we've seen before. And then we're looking at the Sony X95K flagship 4K mini LED taking on Samsung's S90B and well, actually Sony is coming in less expensive. So I guess what's happening today is that if you want the very best top tier Sony TV, yeah, you're still going to pay a little bit more. But in this new sort of 
upper tier space, still very high end, but not the absolute top tier where Sony has historically been more expensive. Well, it's not anymore. Not at first anyway. The conversation and consideration has changed a little bit. Now we can actually thank some of Sony's retail and distribution partners for these lower introductory prices. They asked for it and it looks like Sony gave it to them. Typically Sony comes out with a much higher MSRP and then a few months later drops down to more or less the same price level as its competition. But even then still like a couple of hundred bucks more expensive. This year, the MSRPs are actually quite similar to other premium brands MSRPs, but I think we're going to see less in the way of discounts from Sony when these TVs go on sale than we might from, say, Samsung or LG. And that means that Sony TVs may still be a little more expensive on the long term, but not quite like before. Now, some may argue that Sony now has less of a right to charge a premium when its TVs have been late to the game with technologies like mini LED backlighting, HDMI 2.1, VRR support, 4K at 120 hertz, and so forth. And it is true. Sony is usually behind other brands when it comes to the latest breakthrough technologies. But what I've noticed is that while Sony may not be first, when it does come through with implementing new technologies, they tend to do it a little bit better than the rest. Still, I think it's fair to call that whole notion into question now. Like LG's processing, for instance, has gotten really good. And I think the margin of difference between an LG TV and a Sony TV using the same panel is lower than it's ever been before. And while Samsung tends to take a different, let's just say brighter approach to things, Samsung isn't slouching in key technical areas either. So can Sony really justify charging a premium in today's market where the competition is so close? Well, I think we'll have a more definitive answer by the end of the year. But I think the answer to that question, and indeed the question of whether you should pay a little more for a Sony TV, is gonna be less about the technical performance and advanced features, and more about the quality control and consistency of Sony's products. And for many of you out there, that might count for a lot. I also think that it's gonna come down to whether you like Sony's take on upholding the creator's intent as a guiding principle. Some folks are very serious about the notion that standards matter, while others just want the TV that looks best to them, even if it doesn't uphold creator's intent and conform to certain display standards. All this to say that I think Sony's premium justification margin is slimmer than it used to be, but it might just still have a little bit of an edge among some consumers. If you're an enthusiast or a purist, that Sony still has something special for you. But for a huge swath of customers, maybe Sony isn't the best pick. And you know what? I think Sony knows that, and they are perfectly fine with it, especially if history has anything to teach us on the matter. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. And here's two other videos I think you'll like.